Hey, I'm uh, the Dark Tangent. You're at DEFCON 22, and I've got Lost Boy with me. Hi. Lost Boy is a creator of so much goodness at DEFCON that keeps you up at night, right? You've got like badge hacking or the badge uh, mystery challenge. Mystery challenge. Not to be confused with the original mystery, mystery challenge, challenge, right? The hardware hacking village. Hardware That's hacking village. I started mm -hmm. that. You also helped us out. We had a secret party this year. We left clues around, and if you could find all the clues, if you helped build, yep, you'd end up in a seat in a room for one hour. Where it's just the people who solved the puzzle, so it's just a way to like split us all off and get the no, the hardcore people. Yeah. I mean, we get to cheat because we know where it is, but it's like how do you create this community? And it turns out that Lost, you've been fantastic at building community and getting people, you know, problem solvers that maybe sometimes aren't totally extroverts. That's usually my goal in a lot of the design that I do is to drive people together rather yeah. than so you just think, make puzzles. It's yeah, you like, think puzzle and you're like, oh, they're going to sit in the corner. But no, you've discovered that puzzles are a way of bringing people. Yeah. I have a weird talent for doing that, I guess. I, I still don't understand why it works. Yeah. And I've tried to study and analyze that, but um, people keep coming back. In fact, this year I had a number of people come up and say the only reason they came to DEF CON was to spend the entire time doing this challenge because they wanted to win right. so badly. So now do you think it's though people versus Lost Boy, like they have to defeat your puzzle, or is it? It's not personalized like that. It's more like they need to know for themselves that they can. It's two things. It's them versus the other teams. They want to race against the other teams because it's always a race, um, and it's not really them against me because I'm always there providing assistance when needed. I build in a way to get hints in the program or in the contests. They had to actually, in order to even ask me questions this year, they had to do a certain level of work in order to earn the right to ask questions. Like a, like a question token or but, something. Yes, it, uh, yeah, exactly, a passphrase that they had to discover. But because they had to do that, and now I'm giving them hints, it's more like we're in this together. Ah. And so my challenge is how to craft the guidance that I give as they earn the right to ask questions to move forward through the challenge. Right. And then I have to also make sure that the playing field is level amongst everybody because I can't give an unfair advantage to one team over the other. Right. So they're constantly shoulder surfing each other, and they will all, they often have, it's like uh, old spycraft, they will have somebody tail members of the other team, if they see them approaching me, they know a question's going to be asked. And they want to get and in they'll be like, they yeah. like leaning over, and you'll, you'll see them on their phones, and <laughs> taking notes, and passing through, so. Well, one year, I think a winning team member was actually on two teams. Correct, multiple years that's happened. Right, so what they they impersonated, pretended they were the joined teams? Yes, and I, they, they've social engineered solutions from each other. They have, actually in the end, a lot of times those teams wind up combining together because there'll be a skill set in one team and a skill set in another, right. and, it's, and it's different. And so over so. the years, you've changed the disciplines needed, right? Music, language. I have to. If I yeah. stay with the same thing, it gets stale. And so it, that forces you to develop. Correct. I, I, the year before death, so after I go home after this death, I'll take a week to sleep to get caught up on sleep because I'm, it's a funny side tangent story, no pun intended. <laughs> um, okay. At one point during the con this year, we were in the, the 1057 room working on the challenge together. We looked at my watch, it was 5.30 in the morning, and all of the conference had left and gone to bed, including goons only, the hotel security staff was out, and only the people working on the challenge were there. And I said, congratulations, you've just hacked DEF CON because you're the only oh, one's here. The only one's left. Yeah, so um, I have to prepare all year long, and the way I do that is through all the things that I'm studying or interested in during the year. It has to be something new because if I repeat, then they already know the solution. Right. In fact, that foiled a lot of them this year. The badge challenge this year, um, they thought was similar to the DEFCON 20 where it, they had to communicate with the other badges and that actually wasn't a key piece to progressing mm -hmm. but a lot of them spent time on that because it had been done before. Thinking, right. So the people who are really advanced knew it's never going to be the same thing twice right. so they skipped over that immediately no and it went on. Yeah. So does that, does that make you predictable? Predictable in that I will never do it again. <laughs> so um, I do have some, some... And for those of you watching, if you haven't caught on, he's actually dropping hints yeah. about the next challenge as we talk. <laughs> really. So um, I do have some standard traditions that I always have. We always have a ROT 13 somewhere embedded. Um, there's always something involving a skull, which is a reference to the competition that I won my very first DEF CON, the TCP IP Embedded Device Competition, which is actually how I met you. Right. The first time I met you was up on stage at the first DEF CON. That I right, you had a skull involved. Did. Yes, I had embedded a web server and a skull that did a bunch of other stuff. So all of the Uber badges that I designed too will always in some form or another reference a skull. Right on. So.
So then, so if uh, people are watching this, they're not at DEF CON, right? Is there any way they can get involved? It's funny you should say that too, because during this DEF CON, I had five people submit the solution to the DEF CON 20 badge challenge. And oh. I analyzed it, and my theory is, is they were doing dictionary attacks on the directory on the DEF CON.org website, because a lot of the clues are direct you to DEF CON.org slash 1057 something. Right. And so there were they people, brute force, they did a stationary lookup, and so they were hitting directories from previous years that we don't delete. And so they right. were going, not knowing if they weren't here, that that was from previous, previous years. Year. So they thought it was. So I got the solution to DEF CON 20 like five times this year. <laughs> and it was amazing. Because they didn't, didn't realize. Yeah. Correct. Oh. Um, and a funny, uh, funny side story, uh, the trolling of the contest happened really this year when Oh yeah, maybe talk about so, that. Because contestants, unfortunately, don't know what's a real clue and what's maybe a fake clue. Yeah. And in the past, we've had actors interacting with the audience that were part of the challenge. To see either false clues or misdirection or be part of it. But this year, in order to facilitate uh, getting hints and maybe, because I can tend to be hard to find, I spoke like five times this year. Yeah. Maybe. Is that a record? I, don't I know. had so every close. single DEF CON. Yeah. So um, I actually have a, a burner phone um, for this year's DEF CON challenge. And I'm in one of these pockets. On Google Voice. It's got a Google Voice number. And they get the phone number by decoding the crypto that's in the program this year. So once they get that, then they can actually call this phone. The, the step that's involved there is the, the voicemail message is actually the next piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. However, randomly during the con, I would pick the phone up and answer it and just say, hello. And, <laughs> just to and, mess with them. And people would freak out. So we were at dinner with Joe Grand and a couple of other folks the other night. And Joe is a creator Former of the original badge electronic creator. badges, yeah. And uh, they passed the phone. I had set it on the table, went to the restroom. They passed the phone around, and they answered the phone and gave misdirection to a bunch of the teams and told them that they had to go to Chippendales, find Susan, and ask for the package. <laughs> for the and package. So apparently a group of 30 people from DEF CON went up to Chippendales and asked, and apparently there actually was a woman named Susan working no. there. No. There really was. And was like, what the hell? What are, I don't understand what you're talking about. So No, the package. So yeah. yeah package. And so I get these tweets afterwards. They're like, what the hell? You know, we just And they thought that they just didn't have the proper passphrase or whatever because in, you know, they never know if they have all the information. Right, right. So yeah, that's been great joy. And I've, and I've in fact saved well, all of the voicemails that people have left on this phone. And I'm actually going to put them up. Put them up. Go oh, dude, you got to put them up. And yeah. then do you write up? the whole process so other people can maybe learn from it or everyone or always asks me to do that however I've gotten fortunate in the hardcore people that do this every year have gotten to the point that during the contest now they create a github a wiki um, a google doc and, and at the end of the contest now I ask them since you've won usually to the winning team can you share that and so I don't even have to do that documentation. Oh, awesome. so we're gonna so we're gonna post that stuff yeah exactly so um, there's write-ups from the previous two yeah. like really serious competitions, nice walkthroughs, um, were referenced in the Wired Magazine article that they just did on the badge. So now that we're winding down, how long are you going to keep doing this? Because it sounds, you know, there's always an evolution. Have you been thinking about the future or are you just... Uh, I have and it's weird. Every year I get into the process of development and I keep coming up with ideas for the next year. Okay. And I'm so my, it's keeping you excited. So my theory is is that the year that I do the, the, the contest and I don't have that queue of information in my head for the following year, I don't think I'll be able to do it in time because it really does. It's take just, like, just like DEF CON, yeah, right? Exactly. You get excited for the next one. And it, I guess there'll be some year when you're not excited it's, for the next one. It's, I, I don't know, I've been doing it long enough now that it, yeah. it's been genetically yeah. programmed into us. I, I think that I'd be more afraid of not being able to top what I did the year before and yeah. to stay ahead of so many people because I have to stay ahead of all of them, not just right. one or two. So it, it really does push me to grow and, and to prove what I'm doing. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to see everybody next year and hopefully look for these funny voicemails. Yeah, we'll put those up. Cool.